Hello guys, welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of Nigerian Film Boxing. Please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe right now. And also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all such of you and get a new exclusivity. You definitely be notified. So, FA the silent roller are uh, jaguar god is revenge 10 years later after um his first amateur loss okay he had his first amateur loss against joseph goodhall i was back in 2014 so they met again but this time around as a pro and uh, jaguar stopped Joseph Goodhall in the fourth round with a devastating like combination of punches. Uh, the uppercut really did the damage, if I must say, because Goodhall took a lot of one twos. And I think he himself expected a jabot to like just rely on his one two and not throw anything else. But Ajaba had a different plan. I'm impressed with Ajaba's new um development as a fighter i still think the footwork needs to be improved on you know i need to see let it be a little bit fluid um i think that would take more time but overall his performance tonight i if i should score it would be eight over ten um that's how i see it let's go put on here uh Taj Jagbu to give his take on this far right here. Taj Jagbu. Ajagbu, did Ajagbu impress you? I was impressed. The stoppage, the patience. The, fir the first time he hurt took just a good haul. He was patient. He didn't you know, they didn't bomb rush the guy. But the second time, like nah, this guy's this guy has to go. I like that instant, bro. Wait for us of that. Yeah, um I think uh like I said, I think Ajagba has improved. Um, he's he's continuously showing that what he's working on with his trainer, he's implementing it. Listen, the older Jabba was more of a one-two combination puncher. I mean, a one-two telegraph puncher. You know, now he's in there mixing it up, going to the body, uppercuts, you know. Yeah, you'll say he... Yeah, he used to have an uppercut. No, Ajaba used. Yeah, Ajaba had the uppercut, but he really yeah, used these kind but of how many, how many times did he throw it? Like, and with precision, I, I with precision, and with Jabba. slick, with slickness and stuff like that, he didn't really yeah, throw the old, like. The other Jabba hardly threw any of those punches, any of those combinations. He was more of a one-two. That's it. Hardly went to the body. You know, Ajaba's. You know, Ajaba's slim and athletic enough to go to the body and be able to work the body, you know, but he never did that. But now if you look at him, you know, he's actually, he'll tie these guys up, go in a clinch, give them, give them a uh, nice combination of uppercuts. You know, he'll continue with those combinations, you know, uh, hook, you know, right hook, like he'll continue with those different type of combinations compared to now where, compared to the old times where he's just like a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, continuously, you know, until he gets caught. You know, um, I think, I I think the, his trainer they realized it. You know, just based off his performance with Frank Sanchez, that some of the shit that have to say he doesn't even doesn't even work, especially when he was fighting Frank Sanchez. And when he when he when he when he was uh you know when he was throwing his one two he was out of he was out of reach, you know, and left himself open when he was throwing those one two he was out of reach left himself open. Frank Sanchez was easily countered because F.A. Jabba couldn't defend from him overreaching when he was trying to throw a punch. You know, you try it, trying to throw a punch and you overreach, you cannot defend yourself because now you're trying to reset. And Frank Sanchez absolutely capitalized off that. From the beginning of the fight to the end of the fight to where he got, to where he got, to where he, to where he got dropped and he was on his butt. You know, Frank Sanchez capitalized off that. Now he's not doing that so much. Now he's more, he's more, in the middle where he's actually hitting his opponents and the shots are counting you know he's not overreaching he's not missing the shots those shots are actually counting 
and these guys actually feel it you know but the only thing i'm uh, that that i want to uh, i'm kind of worried about is job now looks like a cruiserweight more than a heavyweight because now he 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 needs to gain maybe they they feel like may, too much too much muscle or too much too much of a uh, of, of being too big will break him down hold him down maybe i don't know but now i feel like you know he needs to just gain a little bit more weight because kind of looks a little bit uh it kind of looks like a, 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 a slimmer to a, towards the cruiserweight not a heavyweight even with the uh, punches landing his punches don't really have shots now he's, it's more of like um they i mean they have shots but they don't really give that landing thud that landing oh man that guy looks hurt you know yeah so I, 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 I jump in the past like of course yeah. i i noticed it as well like he looked very very small like in a way I, because i jump yeah. in the past the right hands they land it landed i think he was around in you know, on two or something like that those right hands usually like at least get an opponent off their game easily you know but it didn't yeah, this time around maybe because he believes if he's at this weight he throws more combinations and have time to work on more things but even at his weight as his, his footwork it should be definitely better oh but, absolutely he's definitely slim he's moving more he's it's i'm telling you it's not a one two for a job anymore man he's really it putting those combinations together bro especially those deadly uppercuts he throws so let's see what he got it's gonna be i don't i think he's i for, for my if he fights uh Zlay zang i think he should be able to take over that fight after the sixth round and really put some work on zang listen man zang is not a pushover but you can really he can really outwork zang if it matters zang is a big dude hey that guy gets tired he's old put yourself put you got you're more he's more athletic You can really do some numbers on Zang. If that fight was to happen, I'm gonna go with uh, Efe Jagba possibly stopping Zang in late round. Hmm, that's very interesting, bro. Well, we'll see how this plays out. Um, uh, congrats to Jagba. Uh, now 19-1, you know. Of course, that that one. That loss on his resume still hurts me a little bit because I think he should have done better in the fight. He could, he could do, he could do better. He knows that. But he said he just came back from a long surgery, like you know, to like get some things together, and um, he is better now. No, let's go, but on here, Kenichuku to give his take on this uh, subject right here. Kenichuku, how impressed are you, or were you, with a job? Yeah, I was impressed with the what should I say? I was impressed with the punch placement. I think his punch placement has seriously improved. I was impressed, impressed with his um combination punches and his selection of punches. Um it was clear that the one who wasn't really going to um be the major difference. It was the uppercuts and the uppercuts that you don't see coming straight out of the clinch. You know when the referee separates you um i think good was expecting that if he would just be throwing that one too but immediately the referee separated them to reset or they just broke out of a clinch that sharp uppercut came through you know so i was impressed with that you know i, I was also impressed with his um, patience you know he wasn't he wasn't rushing his work i mean even when he stumbled him in round three he didn't rush his work he didn't rush his work he didn't smother his work he waited patiently for him to come and then picked him apart and then in round four he did his job and then the referee um stopped the match you know so i was impressed with that you know i think um where he can seriously improve on is like i said it's his lateral movement um you can clearly tell and you can the difference between him and his fight against Stephen Shaw you could clearly see that like he said he was coming off surgery but so he wasn't really that confident you know in his um, punch placement and his in his shots <clears throat> you can clearly, you can clearly see the difference it's like night and day that if he's more confident in his short selection in his punch placement because even when good or rock team i think was in round two or in round three he was still confident that mm, no matter what i'm still going to get this guy out of the ring shot 
bad as bad. I'll get him out of the ring, and he did his job, you know. So he didn't. Even, you could tell. You could tell that his work in the gym is really coming to fruition. I just think that that lateral movement against Jili Jang is going to be needed, you know. Um, like um, um, I said, yeah, it's true. He's he's boxing off with the back foot. He's really good right now. But that lateral movement still needs to come into play. When you get to that top 10, top 15 heavyweights, this thing, that lateral movement is needed. Lateral movement and head movement is seriously needed because, you know, one punch is like the, is like the touch of death. It can knock you out in the heavyweight division. So, um, on to the next for him. I hope they give him like a between a 20th to 25th rank WBC guy that he can style on. You know, so that's what I hope for him. But well, it's it looking like match. it's looking like Johnny Lee would be next, nice though. But we'll talk about that uh, soon. Yeah, we'll talk about that when is uh, when when they make it. I saw Jay Prince, and I don't usually see Jay Prince there, but I saw Jay Prince around today. So. Uh, that means there's a big fight coming up. Yeah, there's a, a big fight is next for Jogba. I don't think, of course, I understand that. Okay, we have to give him, um, you know, some fights that you know that he has a chance of winning, or you know that it could be a, a very good fight. But Jogba will still get get a nod. I want to see Jogba utilize that jab uh, against someone like John Jule. I want to see that jab being utilized because. That jab is his weapon, bro. He's a big weapon if Ajabba capitalizes on it. He's a big, big weapon. And his jab is not just a jab. It's a power, uh, score-crushing jab, bro. I tell you right now. Oh, what do you guys think? Uh, Ty? Yeah, that, it, it is. It is. It's just my own, pro my own this thing. I'm always fearful of is what's coming back what's coming back that head movement needs to be a hundred percent right if that head movement is not a hundred percent right um i'll um you can get him in trouble yeah man see how, how that plays out um where he, you know you are in, in boxing you have to take risks you have to take five give me a second guys you have to take risks you have to take fights that even though you might not win at least you know you perform at uh Tajakbe. Um yeah, like that jab, bro. Energy utilize the mode, what do you think? Yeah, his um you you're talking about FA's jab, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you know what? FA has a really he has a very strict jab. That jab is very strict. What I mean by that is it's always on target, you know, it's nasty, it's straight, and it's right there. You know in their face and i like that jab because you know that jab hey man the jab is always going to be there for you when you need it and when you know how to utilize it properly you know a lot of these guys they really don't know how to throw a proper jab but if is one of those guys that can really throw a good jab and it's very strict and it's very fun and it's very and it has everything about you know using your skills and fundamentals when it comes to boxing that jab is there for him you know and you know he's right there in the middle He's not overreaching. He's not missing. Hey, he's got the height. He's got the ability. He's got. He's got. The, he's got the athleticism. You know, use it, man. Let let this guy use it. You know, he needs to. Uh, I believe his team is his team is working on that. He cannot let this fight, especially with Zhang Zelay, get away from him. This is it, man. When it when they when they speak of Zhang, he must know this is this is war. I gotta avenge myself with uh, Frank Sanchez loss. I really got to really put this guy down. I at least got to, for the most part, I got to go in there as I, I'm, I'm hunting this guy. Man, I cannot let Zhang try to, you know, just because I'm I, I'm facing another southpaw. Listen, between Zhang and Frank Sanchez, Zhang don't move. Zhang does not move. And he's there to be hit. He's big as shit. You know, after the fifth, sixth round, he, fourth, fifth round, he gets tired. Man, effort, a job needs to turn it up and take it from there, bro. You know, at the same time, just be careful of Zhang's. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, break, we'll break that down very. We'll break that down very soon, guys. So right, no we'll break it down uh, next, guys. You heard it from brother Ajab Wekilichugu. Stay tuned for my super right here because we're gonna go into a very um, interesting topic right now, which is the potential matchup between 
Jang Jilei Business FA, the silent roller, Ajabba. God bless you all.